So anyway, random numbers are important. Um, you know, you have certain certainly need them for keys and such. You should put some thought into actually how you generate random numbers. Okay. Don't use your favorite pseudo random number generator. It's not the way to go. Uh, okay. Kind of the I guess final topic here: information hiding. <clears throat> Okay, we can think of, these are really uh, kind of two sides of the same coin. We can look at this problem basically from two different ways. Okay, one is in terms of watermarks and one is in terms of steganography. The idea of a watermark is that we want to hide some information in the data. Okay, now why would we want to do this? A uh, typical example, uh, and I actually interviewed at a company that wanted to do this a long time ago. Okay, what they plan to do was to take digital music, uh, video, audio, video and or audio, and uh, hide some information in it, okay? Hide some stuff. Now, when you say play the video, it looks just fine. Play the audio, it sounds just fine. To the user, you don't even notice it's there. But supposing I sell some copyrighted music to you, I put this secret information there, and that copyrighted music shows up somewhere else, I can read that information out, and I know I sold it to you, so I can sue you for selling it to someone else. Okay? That's kind of the thinking. Okay, that's one possible possible use. So as a defense against uh, software or music or video uh, piracy sorts of things. Now you can turn that around. If you can actually put some information in there that nobody even notices, well, I could put that information in there, send the audio file to someone else, and it would look like just an ordinary audio file that people send around all the time, but that other person can read the information out, and we can communicate that way without anybody even knowing that we're communicating by using that method of communication. Okay? So it's really, you know, techniques kind of the same, uh, same thing, but just for different purposes. All right? Okay. Uh, okay, watermarking. Um, you could think of this in different ways. Um, you could uh, the watermark could be uh, classified by whether it's invisible or not. Invisible meaning you know it's like space ghost. You can't see it. Right? Um, no, it doesn't mean it's literally invisible. Okay, it means it's just not obvious. Okay, when you listen to the audio file, you don't hear it. When you watch the video, you don't notice it. But it's there, right? I mean, the bits have been changed. You've done something to the actual bits, so if you looked at that level, you would actually see a difference. You know, something's been done. Uh, it might actually be visible. You might just stamp top secret on your documents, right? That's a watermark, okay? It's meant to be seen, okay? You want people to know it's top secret, so don't mess around with it. Um, you could also classify things based on whether it's robust or fragile. So if you're putting this watermark in music, say, and I sell this music online, somebody buys it. They say, hey, you put a watermark in there, so I'm going to do something to this file before I sell it to my friends. And what would you do? Get rid of the watermark, OK? So get rid of it, or at least mess it up so it can't be read. You would attack the watermark. Okay, so I might want to try and make that watermark robust. So you cannot attack it without damaging the audio file or video file or whatever. Okay, that would be the ideal. On the other hand, I might want my watermark to actually be fragile. So that if somebody tries to attack it, it does get damaged. And what's the point of that? Why would you want it damaged? Why would you want your watermark to get damaged? It seems kind of... Yeah, exactly. So it's a kind of integrity check, right? So if the watermark doesn't show up when you receive the file, you could say, oh, it's probably been tampered with and I won't trust it, all right? Okay, so things you might think about would be putting, say, a robust and visible watermark in digital music, like we described, uh, or, say, a fragile and visible watermark in an audio file so that uh, it's kind of an integrity check when it's received. And you can try you know, lots of other possible combinations here. OK. Uh, OK, so here's one of my favorite non-digital watermarks. 
Um, U.S. currency and lots of other currency, you know, have watermarks of all sorts. Um, you know, if you look at a twenty-dollar bill, that's a good one. You know, it has like it has all these things embedded in the paper, right? All these different pictures and writings and stuff, and uh, even you know the numbers are special and colorful and sparkly and stuff like that. And it's also very easy to check, right? You can hold it up to light, right? And you can see all that stuff in there. And, and what's the purpose of all that? Why do they do all that? It's harder to counterfeit. That's right. So, well, so if you guys want to take a look, I'll pass this around. <laughs> Not that I don't trust you. Okay. Um, okay. Now, another example. Uh, I was at this uh, conference. There's a, a big conference every year on um, information hiding. And this was a long time. This was several years ago. And there was a guy there from uh, Kodak. Now, uh, the, the way things work at, at uh, academic conferences like that is, you know, most of the talks are really boring. You know, some are okay, you're kind of interested in a few, but most of them you don't really care too much about. The real interesting stuff happens at the parties. So this was at a party uh, the, at the end of the conference. This guy from Kodak, he got to chatting. And I think he had a little too much to drink, you know, he just about fell over the rail of the boat. So anyway, he was kind of getting uh, get to that point. And he, he had this uh, interesting comment. He said that, um, uh, that Kodak didn't really think too much of this whole information hiding thing. They didn't really think it was very commercially useful for them except they'd come across one kind of clever idea that they thought could be useful. And what he claimed was that they could take a photo, okay? You know, suppose it's like, you know, Granny's photo on the wall or something, okay, you got posted at home. And they could hide information in that photo so that any one square inch of that photo had enough information to reconstruct the entire photo. And it didn't change the image. I mean, it looked just fine. It looked the same to the, to the user. So the point would be, or the purpose would be, you know, suppose your house burns down and all that's left is one square inch of the photo. <laughs> you could take that in and you could reconstruct the entire photo. That's kind of, kind of interesting. Now the reason I'm kind of suspicious about this is because this is a long time ago and I never heard about this since, but you know, it's plausible that you could do something like that. <laughs> 